We just want everybody to know at the top of this episode of Caravan of Garbage that you are all responsible for this series of films we are looking at. Oh, people people voted for this, right? They, they demanded, demanded it. Demanded it. Wow. We're going to start with the first three. We're going to see how we go. <laughs> yep. Of course, beginning with Transformers 2007, and if people could leave a like, that would be fantastic. But before we get into the movie itself, I just want to get a little bit of background on your love for the Transformers franchise, Mason. Mine is undisputed. I'm the biggest fan in the world. I don't, oh my goodness. I don't have to prove my credentials. Wow. Growing up, I loved Transformers. I don't know. It was just, the cartoon was just a... a it was a cartoon? Yeah, that's true. I mean, it was a 30-minute ad. Maybe that's what you're thinking of <laughs> for Transformers toys. But I love the Transformers toys. Some were kind of cheap and, and, and tacky, sure. but some were like design-wise just incredible. Mm. And I just, I got as many as I could but the one that I probably love the most, and, and I still have a few laying around my house, is Optimus Prime. Mm. You know, because he's obviously, you know, strong and brave, but he's also selfless, and he's caring, and he's compassionate. Sometimes and he's most dead. importantly of all, he's a bright red mid 1970s cab over engine white Freightliner. Obviously, <laughs> because the only true mark of a real hero is you got to have a signature look. So true. And every, and, and, you know, for years as I was growing up, I remember, you know, people would be like, there's a live action Transformers in the, in the works. Mm. So exciting, right? Oh my God, I'm going to get to see Optimus Prime on the big screen. And then I remember... He's going to wave to me, Nick Mason. When I went into the cinemas and I remember he first rolls up into that screen and I remember the entire audience stood up as one and they went, oh my God, a Peterbilt 379. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Actually, that's not, that's not true. That didn't actually happen. But at the same time, I can tell you within my heart and soul that if Optimus Prime in the movies looked like Optimus Prime in the cartoons, I would forgive <laughs> all the nonsense. I would watch the, the 15 hours of Transformers movies, whatever it is, yeah. and, I, and I would... I, I mean, there are nods to it in yeah. other films and, I, and whatever, Look, and I would, I would forgive the majority main characters that are just screaming lunatics. Yep. I would forgive the fact that all the Decepticons look exactly the same. Yeah. I would forgive the fact that you can't tell what's happening in any of the action sequences because everything is happening all the time. I would argue a lot of those issues are lessened in this first movie. Oh yeah, for this sure. This is very watchable. It's it's a little it's pretty watchable. Yeah. But again, if if I would forgive all those if Optimus Prime looked like he did in the cartoon. But he doesn't. He looks like a monster energy drink. That's what he looks like. <laughs> yes. What about if they made Megatron change to a little handgun? Oh, speaking of that as well, I don't know if you remember, there was a teaser trailer for this movie. It's a Mars rover and it's and it's surveying the landscape with mm. its camera and then you see it's knocked over and then the silhouette is very obviously Generation 1 Megatron. Yeah, right. Like the one that does turn into a gun. But in this, what is he? He's a weird, rusty skeleton. Well, they, they did change his look a little bit due to some fan outcry. They changed the face. But I don't think it's any closer to the look. I, you can't deny like how great the special effects are in this movie. Oh, for sure, yeah. I like, mean, from I, a technical perspective. Yeah, sure. I do want to get into the, the design elements of, of this film that I don't love as much. But yeah, it is an absolute technical marvel, which hadn't really been seen at the time. And one of the first things I noticed about re-watching this for the first time in years, because these movies are exhausting and I try to stay away <laughs> yeah. from them, is that the sound design is amazing. <laughs> It's so, like, the clinking and the clanking and the way that they work in the original sounds from the 80s TV uh -huh, show, sure. you know, and all those But there's also things. so much of it. <laughs> but again, there's I think There's never a quiet moment in this movie. But I think that's something that kind of isn't so bad in this one. But you know that idea when, at the start when that, that helicopter rolls in and they're like, what yeah. kind of helicopter is That's a great action sequence. It's fantastic. And when it transforms and you get that original sound, it just starts yeah. blowing people down. It's so good. Yeah. If only the rest of the movie were like that. But it's not. And I also like some of the little changes that they made, like they've got a little holographic pilot or driver in, in the vehicles. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, yeah. I'm, that, I'm sure that's something that's probably happened in various incarnations. Sometimes it's a hologram. Yeah. Sometimes it's like a pop-up, like yeah, a crash right. dummy man yeah. that comes out of the seat. Like from Men in Black 3, that movie I don't think you've seen. No. Might have been two. I guess we can talk human characters because that is the majority of this this film. Yep. So Shia LaBeouf, he's, he's, a, he's a teenage boy. Yep. He's as golden as the day is long. He just wants a car and a girlfriend. Why have you opened by talking about the sidekick <laughs> and not the main character, Megan but Fox's Michaela Baines? It is kind of baffling that she's not the main character. She is. She's like <laughs> capable and skilled. Yep. And she's got a, like a character arc and a backstory that is something because she's she, she had a dad in prison and that's how she learned her skills. She's fitter, I think. She's definitely fitter. She could she, outrun him. She makes the choice at the end to yeah. be like, we're going back into the battle kind yeah. of thing. The movie should be called Michaela Baines and her sweaty flailing sidekick. <laughs> well, there's the thing about 
a lot of these Transformer movies. And Bubble Bee is the exception also to a lot oh, of yeah, people talking sure. about. Yeah. Including the Optimus Prime problem that you have. But there's three main characters in these movies. There's stoic military guy. Yep. There's stuttering, insufferable idiot. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of people. <laughs> yes. And then there's chicks. Like oh, that's yeah. kind of the breakdown. You <laughs> yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like in a, in a lot of situations, maybe even Michael Bay wanted, you know, chicks to be the main character. Sure. But he felt like, well, it's a movie about cars and it's about guns and shooting or whatever. So and boys love Transformers. And and, and, and and people won't be able to accept that. So I'll just I'll just shunt her off to the side. Yeah. And then I'll just make some idiot the mm. main character. And eventually, like, she does leave the series, which we will talk about in, oh, a, in a later goodness. movies, the, the story behind that. But on the whole, I, I, this, I still find this one... There's a bit too much going on. It's too long, I feel. Oh, yeah. For the things going and on. And yet, aside from Bumblebee, it's the shortest of the Transformers movies. Baffling. <laughs> Isn't it yeah. right? Because you've got the Scorpion chases Tad Hamilton and his friends through the desert. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, I think would make a great movie by itself. Being stalked by Decepticon through the desert. Like pitch black -esque. Like Predator style. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. Uh -huh. You've got kind of Shia LaBeouf dicking around looking for glasses and, mm -hmm. and getting wrapped up in this plot. And, and then, uh, yeah, being being pursued by John Turturro. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then you've got kind of boring government hacking satellite crap. We're just looking at feeds of signals and and shots of planes taking off and flying through the air and mainframes and all mm. this kind of shit. This like sweeping shots of the military. Take that out, please. Oh, 100 percent yeah. of those of those three, that one should go. Mm. But it w here's the thing though. It can't go because uh, Michael Bay gets all his military equipment for free yes. if he does some military promotion. So well, that's right, exactly. But so, he, but you can't get rid of the cars because you get free. Yeah. Apparently, they got two hundred free cars. Yeah, this that's, movie that's from General exactly, Motors. Yeah, that's exactly it. And they trashed a lot of them. Anything that's not considered an army drill, which they use for this movie, he pays for all the ammunition and the explosions and all the fuel and all that uh -huh. kind of stuff. So yeah. So if you're if you're thinking your US tax dollars are going to waste, I mean they are, but just not for this. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bumblebee. Obviously, mm. in the in the cartoons, he was always a Volkswagen. In this, he's a Camaro. I saw an interview with Michael Bay where he's like, I he will never be a bug. <laughs> he look it'll look like Herbie the Love Bug. I'll shoot myself before I. Make I was just him gonna a bug. say Herbie, like. Who remembers Herbie? Nobody. Well, there was a... When was Herbie fully loaded? <laughs> Maybe it was the previous year. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah. that's not the reason. It's the reason is General Motors gave you all the free cars. Yeah, absolutely. And the reason that was given for Optimus Prime not looking like he did in the cartoons is mm. because apparently they wanted to make Optimus Prime the largest and most imposing Autobot. Yes. And the 10,108 moving parts. Oh my goodness, that's yeah. too many. And the reason that he couldn't transform into the cartoon classic mm. model is because that would mean the robot version of him was too small, so they needed a bigger truck. Sure. And he was apparently on record as saying, we're not going to do anything dumb like size changing in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> which which makes a lot of sense, except when you consider that the whole plot device of this movie is like a cube the size of a house that, that shrinks down to the size that a of flailing a man... Of, of an American football. Exactly. So oh you can get God. a touchdown for exactly. America. And even then, maybe if you're like, well, the, the, the plot device can shrink, but nothing else can shrink. Just put his legs in the trailer then. <laughs> yeah, and that's then, right. Again, which you didn't give him. <laughs> I will never give up on this. You could have made him 100 feet tall with that trailer. Right? Well, it's funny you should mention that because they wanted to make him bigger, and this was the difference. Mm -hmm. If they did the original design, he would have been 20 feet tall. With the changed design, he was 22 feet tall. <laughs> Worth it. So you really feel it, don't you? <laughs> Worth it to turn him into a Guy Fieri truck, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's You're 100% yeah. right. Who, by the way, he does a lot of great charity work. Seems like a Gets very a nice lot man. of flack. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he's not cancelled the week that this goes out. These designs, and again, this is a problem later on because they're much harder to distinguish. With their spindly crab faces and they're uh -huh. just... I'm talking about Decepticons specifically. They're just grey monsters just kind of jaggedly running about. And it's difficult to determine in any given action sequence which ones have been destroyed, <laughs> which ones are still left, where they are on the battlefield, because they all look the same. And they can all turn into anything. Yeah. Which is a difference from the cartoon where every Transformer was assigned a specific vehicle mode and they couldn't change out of that vehicle mode. Yeah. Whereas in this, if a, you know, a Decepticon wants to be a tank and then become a police car and then become a helicopter, they can just do it. So yeah. oftentimes you're like, did that guy die or is he... A different guy. That's a different guy. It was also confusing with the merch as well and also the names of the characters in this because they use some of the Constructicons but then Devastator turns up in the next movie and those get destroyed in this. Also, apparently that fighter jet which is taking out the fighter jets above the city. You know, yeah. that, that's a pretty amazing sequence. It uh -huh. might not be Starscream. It oh. might be just somebody else. Well, that's I, also behind the scenes I stuff. I have a note here and it's, it's pretty simple so... 
Mm. You know, you'll, be, you'll be able to keep up. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Sandway was going to appear in the film disguised as an MH53 Pavlo helicopter. Later, the copter was renamed Blackout, and then Sandway was going to be a Celine Mustang automobile. However, the Hasbro company requested that a music player, Sandwave's original alternate mode from the Transformers cartoon, be in the film, so the Celine was renamed Barricade, and the music player robot appeared as Barricade's partner. The writers felt the role did not give Sandwave justice, so they renamed the music player Frenzy after Sandwave's minion. Sandwave himself would appear in the next two films. He's the satellite or whatever. Yeah, he's the satellite guy, maybe. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. He's got the best voice. He's got a great design. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of voices, yes. Peter Cullen's back. My name is Optimus Prime. And that's terrific. There is one other original voice actor that appears. And it's not Megatron. No. We'll talk about that, but it's Charlie Adler. He voices Starscream in this, and he does various other voices from the 80s. They went to Frank Welker initially, but he thought the voice wasn't menacing enough, so then they switched to Hugo Weaving. And before yeah. Peter Cullen, mm-hmm. they were thinking of also Liam Neeson. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, which I think would have worked in a version like this. I have a very particular set of skills. I can turn into a truck. <laughs> Push the cube in my chest. <laughs> we should talk about the work, though, that ILM and Digital Domain did for these movies. I mean, full credit also to the on-set stuff that they do because so much of the pyrotechnics and the tearing down of buildings and the bit where the bus splits in two and one of the Transformers flies through it. Uh-huh. That's practical stuff. I feel like this movie gave the visual effects enough time to shine in this. Yeah. You can really sort of luxuriate yeah. in it, whereas in the later movies... They just... Spinning cubes? It's, there's a lot of spinning cubes. There's a lot of... There's, there's a huge amount of Transformers transforming off screen. Yeah. There's a portent for things to come earlier in this movie where Bumblebee's first transformation on Earth is off camera. Right, okay, but yeah. You get, you get some more in later. But that's expensive. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, that's not what you want to waste money on, on in a Transformers movie, transforming effects. One thing that I just think drags way too long on in this movie. The extended hijinks and gags that go on. And I think a perfect example of that is where Shia LaBeouf comes home and he's going to be grounded because he's three minutes late. And the Autobots are kind of stumbling around the it backyard. And then they're like, are you masturbating Shia LaBeouf? And he's like, oh, mum. And Optimus Pride <laughs> is outside like a dog's pissing on someone. Yeah, right. It's exactly. Just, it's just lunacy. Yeah, they're, they're pushing lamps over. It. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is one funny... You've been doing this for <laughs> millions of years, Autobots. You've been fighting a war against the Decepticons for millions of years and your whole deal is that you have this ultimate camouflage yeah. you've been designed and then evolved into this perfect system and you're like should we transform into the very common vehicles on this planet and, and park where they would normally be no nope. Let's just play hide and seek against a wall in robot form. <laughs> We're absolute dumbasses. Yeah, it's like a Three Stooges it is. routine. And I think the worst part of it is that it's it's not funny at all. But whenever we criticise these movies, they, they obviously have their defenders. But I think a lot of these movies do well is because they have international appeal. And I think scenes like this where you can take it to any audience in the world mm. and, you know, you get it. It's wacky hijinks. I think there's one joke that works. And this Go on. In, in the five movies, yes. the Michael Bay ones. Uh-huh. I'm going to save it because it's not this week. Oh. Will it be next week? Yes, it's oh, next week. This is very exciting. But All yeah, right. but every other joke just falls flat and it's just a stuttering idiot. Speaking of, Ben requested that he does a, a no, 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 no Shia LaBeouf compilation. Oh, that's very exciting. We might yeah. do it weekly. Normally we make him do a very complex <laughs> right. montage, but he's, uh-huh. he's offered up himself this week. He's, uh, the Stockholm <laughs> Syndrome has finally kicked in and he's like, maybe I should... Make things difficult for myself. <laughs> no, 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 no! No, no, that, no. No, 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 no,
There's later again explanations for it in yeah, yeah. movies more down the line. We wanted to sell more toys. That's what they say, actual line from yeah. the movie. To their credit for the Bumblebee design, that look, in robot form at least, has been adopted a lot of places and I think has become, for a lot of people, the definitive look of that character. Yeah, absolutely. I, d- yeah. I don't think it's a terrible design. But here's the thing. Could you draw any of the other ones from memory? Uh, what I could do, yes. I could take a pile of sticks and I could spray paint them silver and then break them all up and drop them in a pile. Perfect. And that would work, wouldn't it? Nice. I also think it's very strange that this movie ends with the two lead characters just making out on Bumblebee, who's a sentient <laughs> creature. He's not like a like a horse where he doesn't <laughs> know what's going on. Right. He knows what's going on because mm-hmm. he's trying to get him a date or something. Yep. My problem with this movie is... Yes, go on. I'm seeing a lot of the seeds for the things that I hate in these oh, movies yes. uh-huh. that are then expanded upon in future installments. A man is peed upon by a robot. <laughs> yes, that's right. An award-winning actor is peed upon by a robot. And look, I know a lot of people give J.J. Abrams flack for using lens flares. Mm-hmm. This is lens flare city, mate. Oh, this yeah. One. But look, I know what you're thinking and I know the viewers are also thinking this, right? Because often we'll put in a segment on trivia. Oh, yes. We've, we've pulled back on that a little bit because if we don't name every bit of trivia we get harassed but you might be thinking what happened to trent demarco i'm personally thinking (laughs) who's trent demarco trent demarco this is from his wikipedia page trent demarco is the stereotypical jock he's on the football team brackets tight end don't mind if i do (laughs) has big arms and washboard abs oh hello has a sweet ride has a smoking hot girlfriend and hates nerds. <laughs> this guy's he speaks to me, you know what I mean? If there's any character in this movie that I relate to the most, mm-hmm. it's Trent DeMarco. Isn't it this Mountain Dew vending machine that comes to life? <laughs> Surely that would be your point of view character. So all that, all that spindly little creep. Uh, but the character also appears in the movie Friday the 13th, the reboot in 2009, and is killed by Jason Voorhees. Meaning, technically, that movie is set within the Transformers Averse. Oh my god. That's right. The Transformers Averse shared universe has more connections than you may think upon first glance. Oh my goodness. Got any other stuff you want to say? We didn't really talk about uh, Bernie Mac, RIP, as the uh, as the great uh, you know what? Uh, car, Actually, car s- salesman. Then there's two good jokes, because yep. he does... I'll, I'll bust your head with a rock joke. He threatens his life, like, yeah. Don't be like that. If I had a rock, I'll bust your head, bitch. I think it's his mum oh, or grandma. Yeah, okay, right, right, right. Uh-huh. Uh, and we didn't really mention uh, Australia's own Rachel Taylor yes. as one of the, the three um, teen hacker team. Sure. But honestly, that's part of the thing you could have cut out. Anyways, we'll be back next week for Transformers 2 Revenge of the Fallen, a movie I've seen once but remember being excruciating. Yeah, spoiler alert, it's definitely the worst one. It's not the weirdest one, no. but it's the worst one. Yeah, so we'll be back for that. I'm not looking forward to it, if I'm honest. <laughs> I kind of am, because I have not seen it since cinemas. Well, I swore off re-watching any of these <laughs> after that one, So, and they've dragged me back in. So look, subscribe uh, and come back next week if you do want to see that, because there's videos here all the goddamn time. And if you want these early, mm-hmm. in addition to the extended versions of this, you can actually go to bigsandwich.co. We've got a service there. If you want to sign up, every week you'll get them early. And you'll love it, maybe. And and bonus podcasts and other things. Other early videos. Mm-hmm. Movie commentaries. That's right. By us, specifically. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe should have Sorry if you're expecting, you know, Michael Bay or something. To yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just be us. He's busy. All right, we'll see you guys next week for... What? <laughs> Transformers. Transformers. Grab that jammy, guys. We'll see you then. This is not a good idea. That's the best idea. Best idea anyone's ever had. Mm.